Fantastic. Well, hello everyone. My name is Peter. I am the chief editor of all these videos and also the chief son of Elsa Björn. And I just want to quickly interject a special message today just to say, hey, today is um, my mom's birthday. <laughs> so I just want to say, I love you so, so much, mom. And I just want to wish you the happiest day today. And, well, Happy birthday! <laughs> and for everyone watching this as well, if you can, if you see this, go down to the comment section and just drop a happy birthday as well. That would be very much appreciated. So yeah, and also, just also another very special announcement. We've got a great guest today that you guys are going to watch very soon. And oh, I hope you enjoy it as much as we did because oh, it was fantastic. So. Let me just formally introduce, we have got Megan, who does a lot of technical stuff here sewing machines, and we've got a great interview with her coming right up now. So I just want to say thank you all for watching, and you have a great day. Bye-bye. Welcome back to my channel. It's Elsevier from Benina Edenvale and Sherpa Design South Africa. It's a freezing cold morning, so I've got someone with me today, and you can see we're both sitting with our mugs <laughs> trying to keep warm. And I've got Megan York here from Benina Technical Services. So we're going to pick her brain today and ask her technical questions that I know we get a lot in the shop so that you can get the answer from a technical side. So Megan has been doing services with Benina sure. now, or you've been how, how long? Um, been involved with the workshop, my hubby and I have owned the workshop for, first of all, how's it, Elsa? <laughs> Tomorrow's her <laughs> birthday, everybody, so happy one day early birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. 21 again. 21 again, always. <laughs> always. <laughs> okay, so um, Greg and I have owned the technical centre for 28 years this year. Um, we've been involved in Benina, we've owned retail stores as well, and Greg has held the position at the head office of the technical manager. So yeah, his first job ever was at Benina. So it's way over forty years that he's been um, he's been part of Benina. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's good, good and good and old, old and good knowledge. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, that's great. Benina's the uh, let's say Megan and Greg does our services for our shop. So they usually come and collect the machines from us on Tuesdays and Fridays. So if you're in the <coughs> sorry if you're in the area and you need your machine to be serviced, uh, you just drop it off with us with the drop off and pickup point. And Megan is the one that comes and collects it and from there you deal with them. She will be in contact with you to um, write through the service um, telling you what's, what's needed for your machine. But today we're going to ask Megan some questions. So Maybe. the first question that we get in the shop is why do I need a different needle for different fabrics? Okay, um, yeah, I suppose it's the same as why do you use different implements when you eat different food? You know, you can't cut your steak with a spoon. <laughs> same type of thing. It's good, good way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the, the thickness of the needle, the point, the way it's manufactured, that all changes um, according to how the, the needle is made. So yes. um, you get your denim needles, um, which the actual shaft of the needle is um, strengthened so that when it penetrates through the denim it doesn't waver the mm. actual needle so that is a thicker shaft i'm going to run through it consecutively a different yes. types of needles so you get the denim elongated um shaft strengthened mm. you get your um you get your denim oh, sorry your leather needles the actual point of the needle mm. is then sharpened so that what happens is when it penetrates through the leather it actually cuts the the garment and it, your, your, your thread mm. then fills up that hole. Mm. Um, your ballpoint needle is a rounded um, point. So that's going to um, make the thread or the needle actually penetrate on either side of the weave of the, of mm. the fabric mm. that you're sewing on. So it doesn't ladder your knitted um, garment, you know, your, your knitted yes, fabrics. Yes, yeah. um, stretch, specifically designed with an elongated point so um, when it goes into the actual fabric the fabric then it bows down a little bit the stretch fabric because there's elastine in the fabric 
And so when it pushes in, when the needle pushes in, what happens is it gives it the timing of the machine enough um, time to be able to make the lower thread. So that little point is slightly that's longer. That's when I didn't know. That when I yeah, so that, that's, that is why you can't use a stretch needle in an overlocking machine. Because the point is actually longer and it tip, 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 tips on the loopers. Oh, and yeah. you can hear that. So in your overlocker, ballpoint and universal only. Those are the only two that you use in an overlocking okay. machine. Right. Um, you can use your thicker needles, but you don't really go overlocking denim and you know things like that. So it's not really a functional, it's yes. just an edging yes. sort of yeah. Um, yeah. use. So we're going to just interrupt sure, for a minute. Um, also one thing that we do want to mention, Megan brought up the overlocker. Overlockers only use a size 80 or 90 needle. Don't use a bigger oh, needle. Yeah. You or a smaller needle. No, definitely no. not a smaller needle. Bigger, it's unnecessary because you, you, you first of all, you, you the little, you got to like open the screw too much and it's, there's not enough space to put it in. Mm -hmm. So okay. definitely all right. 80s and 90s. And 90s okay. Highly recommended only. And then while you're on the, the, the talking of the 80s and 90s, your needle threaders on machines battle to get through anything smaller than an 80. 80. So if you're having a problem with your needle threader on your machine, just remember that you've got two little pieces of cotton and the point of the needle threader going through that incredibly tiny hole of mm -hmm. the actual point of the needle, yes. of the eye of the needle. Yes. So it just can't get yes. in, yeah. especially motorized cotton. Big issue with the 70, 75, yeah. 60 needle. And also about the, the needle threader, Benina doesn't guarantee your needle threader. So we test it as a dealer uh, before the machine goes out and we make a point of mentioning it to everybody, 80 needle or up you can use it and we do get customers coming in that's actually damaged their needle threaders and unfortunately because it's part of wear and tear that doesn't yeah. fall under your guarantee yeah. um, for your machine so that's a very important mm -hmm. the needle threader remember. can't use itself no. you are the person that is either <laughs> yeah. pushing it too hard yeah. or making it skew you know if you've had too much mini meal in the morning and you like really <laughs> bash it down <laughs> it's going to damage it all right, right. so yeah. yeah gentle okay. gentle okay. definitely okay. all right yeah, we're going up and down all different subjects. Okay, okay. so we're back with the, the needles. needles. So we've got, um, I've gone through your strengthening of the denim, the sharpening of the leather, and your Microtex needle. Okay, so many years ago, I don't know if, I think you were much younger then, much younger. There was a fallacy about a blue needle. A blue needle was going to save the world. Okay, it's actually the old-fashioned coloring of the, sh yes. the, the stretch needles. They were completely blue. Yes. And, um, you know, in the shops, the ladies used to come in and say, oh, you know, I've got this difficult fabric, I need a blue needle. The same sort of thing is happening now with a Microtex needle. People seem to think that a Microtex needle is going to solve all sort of like tension mm. and gathering problems, especially yes. on the finer materials. Absolute fallacy. So you, your Microtex needle is specifically designed for microfiber fabrics. Now, microfiber fabrics are those that you've got your weft and your warp of your fabrics. Mm. It's when the weft and the warp have got excessively large amounts of threads per square millimeter. Mm. So what happens is the Microtex needle almost grabs less thread as it's making a stitch and it then prevents it from puckering up. So your fails or your jets, your um, chiffons, Things yes. like that. That is where you oh, use your okay. microfiber, yeah. uh, your microtex needle. See, I'm also learning something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that, and then you've got your easy thread needle. Your yes. easy thread needle never gives you good quality tension, though, because there's a little nick in the side for you to push your cotton through. through. Yes, I must admit it's really good if you are like bad eyes and things like that. Mm. But you must remember the actual cotton is forming over the point of the needle, the upper and the lower thread, and yes. that little groove, no matter how small it is, it actually does influence the tension okay. of the machine slightly. Easy threads, okay, cordonet, self-explanatory, that is for your top cotton. Um, the, the needle's eye, so if you take, this is the shaft of the needle, if you've got your needle eye there, it's got the little groove on top of it that it actually holds your coordinate thread into position before it slips into the hole okay. of the actual needle. So that, and it's also strengthened, the point is strengthened. Mm -hmm. Another needle that has actually got that little groove in is your embroidery needle. Okay, so okay. the embroidery needle, it prevents your very fine, um, soft rayons from slipping on either side of the point of the needle. It's got a small groove that it holds it inside there. Okay. Metallic as well. 
Okay, and metallic has got a bigger eye as well. Bigger eye, and it's yes. slightly grooved in, so that the stiffness of the thread, because you know the st it's got that outer sheath of lurex yes, yes. on that nylon yes. inner core, so it prevents that from flipping on either side, and also a lower speed, always. Lower speed, lower, speed. lower tension as well? Yes, you can actually sometimes sew a knot. It yeah. depends, okay. yeah. It depends yeah. on the, the coarseness of your your um, metallic thread. Yeah. So okay. tension dials are there for a reason. Um, standard is five. I should I think that's what you yeah, the standard it's setting. Some of them machines four. Four. Yes. Some of them four, are on yes. four. So your standard is what is pre prescribed on the, the machine. But yeah, they're always there, you can use them. Okay. And Definitely right. for metallic threads. Perfect. And your right. coordinates, which are thicker. Thicker so as well. If it, the, the thread is thicker at the top, the tension is then becoming tighter because there's more stuff going inside there, more cotton. cotton. So loosen it. And remember, lower is looser. Okay. Higher, tighter, tighter. lower, looser. Okay, right. that's Perfect. a good way to All remember. Right. So now we've got another question that we get in the shop. How long can I sew with my needle? Because we had a lady that came in once and she used to do embroidery on, on denim fabric. And when she came and she said, my machine is making a really funny noise. And when we listened to it, it was really that thudding noise that you yeah. get. And when I asked her, uh, when last did you change your needle? She said, what are you talking about? So I said, but have you never changed your needle? She said, I've had my machine 15 years and I've never changed Very my needle. Very proud of the fact. <laughs> she said, I was never told oh, to change it. I had to show her in a manual that spoke about needles and um, changing your needle. So that's another yeah. question. We okay, get. so um, let's use the, the knife story again. It's the same as you cut yes. your tomatoes with a brand new knife and it slips through the tomato skin. Lovely sliced tomatoes. You use it then on different items in the house and eventually it blunts. And you saw eventually your tomato. And yes. when you look again, you've got tomato juice. Okay. You don't have sliced tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with the, the point of a needle. If you mm. think of the amount of time the point of a needle penetrates your garment, mm. it's, it's bluntening. Every single time it hits, yes. it's actually yes. becoming more and more blunt. Noise is definitely a very big um, indicator of a blunt needle. You also get it snagging. Yes. So it actually pulls your fabric in. So you can get it almost look oh, like that ladder snag. Yes. I like to suggest two to three sewing hours. Okay. Exchange your needle. So two to three sewing hours is not two to three hours um, of making a garment. Because you know you pin and you press yes. and you iron and yeah. you top stitch and you hand yes. and you whatever. Yes. So I should imagine a garment, one okay. garment, throw your needle away. Another okay. garment, throw the needle away. That's that's good rule of thumb. Um, and if you are the type of person that's actually um, making garments for clients, equate the cost of a needle in because what yeah. a packet is 40 to 60 rand yes. in that region yeah, and yes. yeah, that's 10 rand a needle. So, so you know, if you think of all the garments that you make, especially if you are a, a seamstress, yes. you quite quite a needle, 10 bucks onto every quote. Okay. <laughs> you know what, if, you, if, we all, if you're in it to make money, money. it definitely adds up. It, it adds, adds, it does, it does yeah. add up. All right. Yeah. So then the next one I want Megan to explain to you is threads. We get so many people walking into the shop complaining about the tension that's off or stitches not forming perfectly as well. And they've got no name brand threads on their machine. Now, there's a reason why you're paying 10 Rand for four reels at one shop if it's a no name brand and you're paying, let's say, your Cerulon 25, 26 Rand for a reel. So, we're going to ask Megan to explain to you why you have to have a good quality thread when sewing. Okay, so threads are manufactured differently. Right? So, you, you go through to different, different grades of uh, molds. Um, some of the very, very poorly manufactured cottons, they actually a whole lot of tiny little pieces of threads that they mush together and they then re re um, mull mm. and you get little joins in them, little mm. nodules, little knots. That is the incredibly, incredibly cheap fabric, you know, um, a thread, a threads. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, you, you, you do pay a, a very small amount of money for them. Um, things like that totally, totally to be avoided. So what happens is when the cotton is badly manufactured, these not nodules, knots, joins, um, mm -hmm. they, then, then you go through sort of like the system, the threading system of your machine. Very stretchy, so it stretches out when you're busy um, threading it, goes through the eye of the needle and then it then relaxes. So it's stretched out during the machine, relaxes over here, so it pulls it up. So straight away you get like a gathering effect. Mm -hmm. um, you'll get it skipping stitches because it's retaining the stitch, the, the, 
the thread is being retained too much mm. because it's thicker, thinner, thicker, thinner. thinner. As it's thicker, it's holding the cotton up and it then prevents the lowest stitch from actually forming. So you, you get your skipping. Um, yeah, I like to believe that if you're paying um, three, four, five, six rand for a reel of cotton, you're actually just buying problems for your machine. You need, mm. you definitely need to invest in a good quality um, cotton. Um, sewing machines actually perform better with cottons that are on plastic reels with a, the built-in stoppers on either side. Yes. Why that happens is because those plastic stoppers actually, so like your, your, your Mettler, for, oh, let's mm. use that as a brand. There are others, but let's use Mettler. So they've got the plastic stoppers on either side. As the cotton rolls off, it doesn't matter if it's full or slightly empty, it rolls off at the same pace because that plastic edging is on, on, on the tips. Okay. So it rolls off continually at that space. So you get exactly the same stitch formation. So okay. as it's rolling off the okay. same speed all the time. Whereas your overlocking type of threads, although some of them are very good, your serial line yes. is a very, very good thread, yeah. but it does vary. You will notice that the beginning of the reel and the end of the reel, it does give you a different stitch quality. Yeah. No, it definitely no, does. No, yeah. it does. So I like to suggest your overlocking reels without your plastic stoppers, use it on an overlocker. overlocker. And right. your ones with the plastic, you know, the proper plastic mm. stoppers. Okay. We, we also machine. tell the customers that the, um, if you use the bad quality thread over time, it throws out the tension. Or it the does. Yeah, it, builds up fluff, it. it builds up fluff inside. Yeah. So those, in those little fluffy bits get stuck in your tension unit, they get stuck in your take-up spring, um, a whole lot of different places. Okay. So you... you you shorten the amount of time that you can successfully use your machine by okay. saving money okay. on, on a reel of cotton, but your expense becomes more because you have to regularly get it attended to. Oh, so I think you, yes. it's, it's yeah, money badly saved, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Yeah, it is, yeah. What's Afrikaans with? Goed koop is dier koop. Absolute and total. Just another thing, while we're busy talking yes. about cottons, is unthreading your machine. Yes. You know, many people, you take your reel of cotton and they pull it back, back out, out of the machine. Yes. You need to cut it off and you need to pull it out of the eye of the needle. Um, the machine is actually manufactured for the cotton to go in a certain direction and you're now reversing it mm -hmm. and you're unhooking all the springs, the sensors, the tension, um, yeah. the tension levers and that. So and it's not, not just doing that, we've had people that does... Oh yeah, that, that, that is, <laughs> let's go off of the cotton with a record out. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so the next question we get a lot is about bobbins. So we get machines in, especially Benina machines, and they've got plastic bobbins in or totally the wrong bobbins because they've gone and bought a generic bobbin at the uh, fabric shop. Um, sometimes it looks the same, and they say, but it is a Benina bobbin, and in fact it isn't. You know what, um, the Benina bobbins, if you look at it, we sell the Benina bobbins for about 35 rand. Um, you go to the fabric shop and you buy the generic for 5 rand. And there's a reason that you shouldn't go for those bobbins. Megan is going to explain to you exactly why not. Okay, huh. okay. Also, I mean, the, um, the metal and plastic bobbins, let's start over there. They're yeah. specifically weighted. A metal bobbin has got a weight. Yes. Plastic bobbin is plastic. plastic. It's got very little weight. So, yes. um, the weighted bobbin does assist with the, the tension of the machine. It clearly it holds the lower thread back yes. as much as it needs the time for the upper thread to to perform and make it stitch. Yes. So when it comes out with a metal bobbin, make sure that you still use your metal bobbins. Um, yeah, this this sort of like Fong Kong bobbins that you get. Um, yeah, you get Fong Kong end results with a Fong Kong bobbin, you know. If you want. Okay, so <laughs> your loops and your stitches skipping, um, it's because they're manufactured and they're not smooth. That's yes. the biggest region, yes. reason. Um, they're also oddly shaped. Yes. So where the Benina factories actually manufacture the bobbins, and they are beautifully pressed. They, they think about the little lips. They think about the little outer sections. So they're beautifully polished. They don't have little snags on them. Um, everything that is rough, you must remember your cotton actually forms, um, let's call it its crochet. So it comes from the top and it makes it circle around. It comes from the bottom and it makes it circle to the top. And that is the area in the bobbin that the top and the bottom thread are actually making, make joining. Yeah, yeah. If it's rough, if it's got a snag on it and if it's wrong, it actually prevents it from joining correctly. So you might have the little snag and it takes the bottom and it makes a little loop because it's holding it. That's when you get loops underneath, little loops on the top. And it can also cause skipping. It can cause your machine to jam. 
can cause your machine, your bobbin case, not to turn properly. Mm. And all of this actually damages your machine. You must remember, every time your machine jams and your needle breaks, for argument's sake, it's like riding over a pothole. Or, you know, you can do it frequently, but eventually one day your tire is going to burst. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah, you know, you can ride over glass, you, 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 your risk, but one day you're going to sort of get the, the puncture. Yes. So I like to equate the bobbin, bobbin case, that area, is the wheels of your car. Oh, yeah. Definitely, right. definitely. Okay. So guys, originals. remember it's important to, get, to use the right um, bobbins for your system. Yeah, or for your machine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And okay. also they're identifiable. You know, you get the new range Beninas, those, um, what do you call them, like the nine, the nine, the, the, that plastic. The nine, the, the nine hook system. The nine hook system. The new series, a new four, five, seven and eight series have got it it's a it takes 70 percent more thread yeah, so than your normal nice bobbin. and big they and it's got little silver markings yes on it. and yes. those silver markings we so yeah it's like with everything in the the world everything's becoming disposable so those bobbins that you buy um aren't like your granny bought bobbins once in a life we now have to yeah buy bobbins regularly yeah. if that silver indicator on those new bobbins wears off the sensors in the machine can't actually read the movement of the yeah. bobbin and they yeah. will say um, machine not threaded bobbin yeah. bobbin empty for yeah. argument's sake yeah. but, yeah, but look that that's that's a good point but also our grannies never had all these fancy machines i would rather have no. all these extra special I agree with you. Uh, features I agree on my machine you. and rather every now and then just get a new, new bobbin, bobbin. Uh, because the sensor is going to tell me when the bobbin is yeah. empty or very much so. You know, so I, I would rather work with that because, as I said, our grannies worked with cotton and polyester, so now we've got all this new beautiful fabrics on the market. But we had to adjust our thinking on needles. Yeah. Uh, now we've got these new bobbins, but it's we've got machines with sensors. So yeah. for me, I, I would rather go with that yeah. and rather I, spend yeah. a bit every now and then. I must say, I've had my machine for a long time, uh, about when the first, first seven series sure, came out, and I'm still yeah. using the same bobbins. Yeah. But, but if you look after yeah, it, you look after the bobbins, don't yeah. put them all in a plastic bag, so yeah. that they actually rub, rub up against, against one another. Yes, yes. Try and get a, a bobbin case yeah. or a bobbin storer. Store. And we've got a lovely one now, Benina's bought one out for these bigger bobbins, So and it's got almost like a rubbery Perfect. insert yeah. so that your bobbins are protected and they're not pushing against each yeah, other yeah. so um, so for me Important. I would rather have yeah. fancy a machine with all the features yeah no, very much. then we are also now going to talk about oiling the machine um, and before we start talking about oiling what maintenance you must do at home and why it needs to go to Megan at some stage you can't just keep on giving oil to your machine it does need a bit more TLC at the end of the day but just one thing that we wanted to discuss with you our new uh, machines with the 9 nook system. It's the 4, 5, the 7 and the 8 series. Uh, when they just came out, we were told to put oil on the top. You would have had a little red marker where we oiled. And we would have shown you, because that was what we were told, we would have shown you to put oil there. But you mustn't oil there anymore. They've now said no, no oil anymore there. And Megan is just going to talk to us about oiling those machines and also about other machines, what your responsibility is for maintenance on your side and what's their responsibility okay so i think thanks Elzebe. i think what we must do is quickly talk about the little oiling dot at yes. the top yes um so you do you do need oil in your machine yeah the problem is the quantity of oil in that section because it's sort of running from the top mm -hmm. you are inclined to put too much oil inside there so um what you need to do is we've decided to rather say don't oil it oh, they're going yes. to be taking that little red dot away so the newer range machines that come out the newer manufactured yeah, machines they don't dots. have that oiling that, that red mm -hmm. oiling dot specifically at the top anymore the reason why is because your blade moves underneath them and mm -hmm. if you think about it you're busy oiling if you over oil it it runs and that mm -hmm. blade that moves up and down underneath mm -hmm. to cut your thread it's actually oiling the blade which is very wrong because yes. the fluff is being dragged in yeah, and out, out of the cutting system mm -hmm. and eventually it makes a jam and it won't go back mm -hmm. out and you can't so yeah. then yeah shame yeah. i know i've rescued you on a sunday yeah she's help, really help, help, help. what can <laughs> i do because um, i was like oh well and i filled that little funnel <laughs> there with with my oils so, so yeah yes. so um yeah. yeah so what we do is yeah we suggest now not to oil it when the machine does come into the workshop we put a very special lubricant inside there for you it's a high velocity white needle oil and it lasts a very long time so we don't have hazardly just oil the machine everywhere with a oil every sort of position in the machine has a different, different type of oil, oil that we use all right 
Okay, so at home, what you can do, um, same as needles and cleaning, every two to three hours of sewing. We're not talking in front of your machine time, we're talking sewing hours, so it's basically yeah. a garment. Stop, change your needle, clean your machine out, take your bobbin, bobbin case area out, take your needle plate off, clean in that area over there. Um, what I did have, is this brush, pass this brush to me over there. This is the type of brush that I suggest that you use to mm -hmm. clean your machine. The tiny little brushes that you get in yeah. your kits, they're, they're just pretty. They're not yeah. very functional. So this is a skirting brush that you cut off, so it's a nice stump sort of yes. finish. Um, if you're unsure of how much oil to give your machine, what I like to suggest sometimes is put a few drops of oil on your hand, oil the tip of your brush, and then with that, you actually dab into your machine and you'll see it'll take the fluff off mm. at the same time you're putting a little bit of it oil oil. everywhere. Okay. You then rub that off okay. and then you re, re sort of like collect okay. your fluffies. All right. Don't move springs, don't push on sensors, you know, you must remember that the machine is okay. calibrated correctly and don't dislodge parts. So okay. two to three hours, clean and oil, change needles. But that is the same as putting petrol and oil and air in your car. What mm. you need to do is you must remember that you can't service your car yourself. You do need to take it in to mm. get service professionally. Same as a machine. You're cleaning in this tiny little area over here. There's shafts in your machine. There's belts in the machine. There's the motor. There's the take-up. There's the head frame. Mm. Those are all different parts of the machine that collect just as much fluff, if not more, than in the hook system. Okay. So we do need to split the machine open, take care of all the different moving parts in the machine. And I like to suggest yearly. Okay. Um, why is because we can check for updates, especially on the newer range machines. We can do check calibrations, we check speed calibrations, buttonhole, um, all your sensors that they work. Mm -hmm. You've got guarantees on your machine. So if you choose to, to not bring your machine in, in the guarantee period of your new machine, mm -hmm. we can't replace anything for you under guarantee. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's good to get it in, especially the electronic machines. Yes. Yeah. Two years electronic. Five-year mechanical, Five mechanical, the bananas. Yes. So it's good to bring it in in that yes. period of time. If you sew daily, I bring it in yearly, the machine. If I call the ladies that sew on weekend, weekend warriors. Mm -hmm. If you're a weekend warrior, every second year. Okay. Yeah, All it's right. good ballpark okay. time period. Okay, well, so that's good. So now you know that you need to bring your machine into us. Um, I'll ask Megan to send me some photos of some of the machines that they do work on and I can post it on Facebook for you guys. You cannot believe how dirty some of these machines <laughs> are. It's actually shocking. Um, we actually, just when I opened the shop, we got someone that brought in an uh, overlocker. And we put it on the table and we wrote it up. When we put it on the back and we opened the, 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 you know, the little flat in the front, we had cockroaches coming out there. <laughs> I had to, we nearly put it on a black bag. I and then you gave it to me. <laughs> I, know we, I went and bought Doom and we sprayed Doom in the bag and we closed it up again. But then I got an infestation of cockroaches, of cockroaches and I had to get down. And I've got guys every three months coming to spray yeah, our shop. Um, so guys, please, please, don't, the same. <laughs> please don't. You've felt, paid a lot for that machine. Please look after your machine. Don't let cockroaches oh. breed in your machine. And Megan, has, we've heard stories from Megan of these machines, what they found in their machines. Yeah, tell you about the mouse. We no. found a mouse. We found a mouse in a machine. <laughs> what had happened is that obviously the lady must have sewed and it was warm. The little mouse climbed in where the motor was and she must have started working. And the mouse got jammed into the V-belt section of the machine. Oh, no. It was absolutely, it was the most horrendous thing to see. But it had petrified it. It actually dried out. So there's little like crispy mouse. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing about this mouse. But I don't have those photos anymore. Unfortunately, my phone with that, that photo yeah, on was yeah. actually started many years ago. Yeah. But it was, it went, it went worldwide, this photograph, that in our workshop of this, this mouse oh, inside, no. the, uh, inside okay, the Okay, so machine. please don't bring your machines to us for service if it's got Cockroaches or mice, mice in it. So. <laughs> but well, that's it for us. Then um, we hope we've answered a lot of your technical questions. And uh, please bring your machine in for a service. As I said, Megan and them come and collect machines from us on Tuesdays and Fridays, and they will take off, take care of your machine. And yeah. can I, I yes. just maybe say something? Yes. How about a discount? Should we okay. give the ladies if you do bring in? How's July looking for you? Perfect. Perfect. Good. The whole month of July. July. 
Ten percent discount. Ten percent discount. Okay. okay. Right. So bring your babies in for a service with Megan and them. They're going to offer you that ten percent discount and make sure that your machine is nice and clean and ready for the next year of sewing. For spring sewing. For I'm spring sure sewing. You, I'm sure you've got some exciting courses yes. planned. Eh? Yeah. You need good machines for new yeah. spring clothes. Yeah. But Megan, thank you so oh, much for coming through and doing awesome. the video with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So Have a nice birthday tomorrow. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. bye.